Hey guys, welcome to Superpower User. My name is Stanley, and today I want to discuss the different ways to apply thermal paste onto your Threadripper CPU, uh, such as the one I've got here. This is a third gen Threadripper a CPU 3960X, and you know I've read different ways to apply thermal paste online, uh, different methods and whatnot, so uh, I figured I want to test them myself to see what's the best way, so let's get to it. All right, so uh, like I said, I've got the Ryzen CPU here, and what I did was I went online and found a photo of an Epic CPU, and basically it has all eight CCDs and the I/O die in the middle, and you know just basically matched it up and uh, printed it out so that I could trace out uh, the shape and whatever of the CCDs and the I/O die on this block of acrylic. What, we, what we'll be doing is squishing this block of acrylic down on the CPU to see how the tin flows. And the, a couple things to note before I would do this test here. I'm gonna be using Noctua NTH1. This is my preferred uh, thermal paste. I just like the way it applies and it performs decently well. And the water block that I'm gonna be using for my future build here is the uh, EK Velocity STRX4 or STR4 uh, water block. And this water block here is a full coverage water block, meaning it has uh, basically it covers the entire surface of the CPU. Now, I know there are different types of AIOs that have just a circular mount that you know, only touches the middle. I'm not going to bother testing those because that's not the water block I've got here. Um, I'm mainly focused in on the full coverage type. So what I'll do is bring you a little closer and then we'll start testing. All right, as a baseline test, what we're gonna be doing first is the just the dot method. Um, this is basically what we do with all Intel CPUs, the little rice screen in the middle. Um, this is probably gonna be a little too small, but again, just to get a baseline here of what this is like. So, there you go. That's about how much you would wanna put on Intel CPUs here. So, I'm gonna take this block and give it a squish to see what happens. Understanding that, of course, TIM is, uh, the thermal interface materials is going to flow a little bit with heat, but um, no amount of heat's really going to cover the whole thing with such a small application here. Um, yeah, that's about it. That, that's all I can get out of this. And I'm really actually pushing pretty hard on it, so there's nothing I can do. That's it for that, then. All right, for this next test here, we're gonna be doing the double line method. And we're just gonna put two lines right across the middle here. If I can actually squeeze this out. It's actually pretty decent of a squish. Um, got pretty good coverage. And with a little wobble on that uh, block as you put it on, you get pretty good coverage all throughout the CPU. Uh, the main point is that your CCDs here are pretty much all covered. So that's that. All right, on to the next one. All right, the next method is also the X method. Uh, this is also a very popular method 
that people use. And from here, you can also see uh, with considerable amount of pressure, you're able to get full coverage, at least on the cores and in the middle of the die. Now, again, uh, we know that the tin will eventually flow a little bit better. You know, it's gonna flow out a little bit more, but uh, from the initial squish down, this is what you can expect to see. Again, you can see no bubbles within the tin and everything is extremely um, you know, thin and spread out. So, so that's, that's pretty good. The double line method and the X methods are one, two of the most commonly recommended methods out there. So uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is gonna try on spreading out the tin before I squish down and we'll, have, we'll see what kind of double generation we'll get. So there you go, that's kind of what you would expect if you were to pre-smooth it out. Um, you can see here, you are gonna get places where you're not gonna contact, but then you also have little bubbles on the inside. Now, the NTH1 does level very well, and as you can see here, we really don't have that many bubbles, actually. Uh, it's not too bad, but there are some bubbles here here and there. Uh, maybe over time, this will eventually go away, but at least when you first apply it, it's no good. So let's get this cleaned up and then let's try the last last one, which is the actual recommended method from Noctua. So the next task we're, I'm actually gonna do is this right here. This is the instructions that is, uh, comes with NTH1 and NTH2. And actually, it looks like Noctua recommends nine, nine dots with two millimeters diameter and four dots with three to four millimeters diameter. So um, basically four dots, big, big dots on the dies and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine dots, smaller dots just to fill in the gaps. Uh, we'll give that a shot and see how it compares with the other methods. I don't know, that kind of, seem, kind of seems excessive to me, but we'll see how this does. So, that's not to us recommended method here. Um, Maybe the dots that I had on the side were just too small. Maybe I need to go a little bit bigger. They did say two millimeter dots and four millimeter dots. Maybe I went a little too small, but uh, you know, I think honestly, you know, this coverage right here is bigger and better than those all-in-one uh, Asatec coolers so clearly we're gonna do better than uh, those coolers already so maybe we're just beating the point to death here but um, I mean if Noctua says this is the best best way maybe we'll go with a few dots or dots a little bit bigger but that might be the best
best way to do it. All right, so one last test here. I've actually got a bottle of NTH2 here. We've been using NTH1 for all these tests thus far. And I kind of want to see what NTH2 looks like with those dot configurations. Maybe it flows a little better, I don't know. Uh, be right back, let me see. What, four, four dots, four, oh, oh, okay. This comes out a lot easier than the NTH1. This won't stop flowing. Oh my God. <laughs> this is out of control. that there are a couple gaps here and here but I would imagine that probably disappears with time as it as that you know, stuff the thermal paste levels out even further I actually went ahead and applied the 13 dot method uh, per Nakua's instructions on the motherboard and mounted the CPU and I figured after all that testing we really think should just take a look at how it performs with the CPU block uh, with the correct amount of pressure. So uh, I've already applied it and now I'm just going to be removing the CPU to see what kind of pattern we get on the CPU. Um, let's just take a look. Did you look at that. All right, you can see here on the water block, your coverage is practically complete in the way that the TIM spread out on the CPU is exactly what you're looking for. So uh, I guess the nine or 13 dot method works just as well and as well as the two lines and cross method. So uh, let's go on to conclusions then. All right, so we looked at different options to mount the or to apply thermal paste to this. And I think uh, the takeaway is that either the X method or the double line method or Noctua's multi-dot method, they're all valid because you get proper coverage. The heat sink is able to squish down on the, you know, the CPU and be able to level out the thermal paste. So you get good coverage and as long as you apply thermal paste on there, <laughs> I think the takeaway is that it really doesn't make it much of a difference. Even, even spreading it out with a finger, uh, most of the bubbles actually came out. So I don't know if it's just because the thermal paste, the Noctua NTH1 or NTH2 are just good thermal paste that uh, it auto levels really well. Um, maybe, you know, Bravo to Noctua if that's the case. But, uh, you know, just, I guess what I'm trying to say is if you are trying to apply thermal paste onto your CPU, don't, don't worry too much about it. Apply it however you like, whatever makes you feel comfortable. Um, like I said, cross or double line or dot method, all three methods are you know, apparently valid. So anyway, uh, if you found this video useful, make sure to hit that like button and perhaps comment down below on your method of applying thermal paste and why. And make sure to mention what kind of CPU you're using because I think that makes a big difference if you're using either a Ryzen CPU or you know, one of those smaller CPUs. Anyway, I'll catch you in the next one.